person. What do you mean? Can you give me an example? The person said, Have you heard about Sophia, the humanoid robot? Right? This was the answer. And, 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 and you know who is the person who told me this? My 8 year old daughter. Right? All of this is actually going to tell me this. Artificial intelligence and the rise of AI has been a good story of our times. Right? It's becoming so popular, so omnipotent and so omnipresent these days in terms of creating technical value that we are discussing it today. It would have been a wonderful dinner time topic. But unfortunately, here we are sitting in an auditorium setting and trying to discuss this. Right? We are trying to probably look at what is artificial intelligence all about, what are the various views, what people do take, the utopian view which is very positive about technology as a whole on one side, to the dystopian view which talks about artificial intelligence as a destroyer of humanity and then try to see how we can merge both of them to take a very pragmatic and a practical view of what can artificial intelligence do for you and for me. Right? That's actually going to be different. If you look at a piece of paper, any, any newspaper that has decent circulation, any web blog, any web paper, Right? That would be the 
framework of our conversation and then let me add a disclaimer this is not going to be a nerdy geeky talk which talks about artificial intelligence deep learning reinforcement learning and things like that right this is going to be a more generic open conversation with you guys artificial intelligence is all not new right though the hype and hoopla around artificial intelligence is pretty recent it's not all that new 1954 that's approximately 64 years ago was when the original concept of artificial intelligence was born focusing on biomimicry biomimicry is something where science tries to learn from nature and emulate it okay they studied the dynamics of the kingfisher bird and they built the world class bullet trains which are called the shinkansen right if that can happen scientists were inspired why do i really look at only the physical modeling why don't i really capture some of the mental and the intellectual modeling from the nature and then try to ask machines to do the same that was how the concept of artificial intelligence was born but because the idea was born ahead of its time and artificial intelligence was based on lots and lots of data quick calculations and infrastructure for it, it was not available at like 1954 during 1954 the technology had to get into hibernation it failed as an idea at the time it was something like without people knowing that coal can be used to produce steam james watt imagined the steam engine and introduced it do you think it would have been successful no right something similar happened in artificial intelligence actually went into hibernation there were a lot of internal failures right following which people's knowledge slowly started uh, studying the science of cognition how do people learn right how do people make decisions they try to implement it and in 2015-16 with this popular game between deep mind which was actually a google pay figure uh, machine is defeated someone in the game of alpha go artificial intelligence took a rebirth and there was a lot of commercialization of opportunity that started happening around it right so this gives us a feeling that artificial intelligence is something new something that's actually happening now which we can actually get into so in reality artificial intelligence is not all that new right the reason as to why an idea that failed in the past is actually succeeding today is because in today's economy we are actually trying to generate approximately 1 million terabytes of data every day and data is the new oil right like steam engines feed on coal to generate steam artificial intelligence feeds on data to give insights and then try to change lives around it right since the computing power is no longer a constraint thanks to advent of cloud technologies iot and things like that followed by storage which was actually very expensive do you remember the cost of a 10 megabyte drive in some of the computers that we used to buy way back in 1990s used to cost us something close to 80000 bucks and today you can actually get terabytes of storage online at this rate so all these things have actually aided the progress or advent of artificial intelligence as a whole so it's ai is not about the so is ai only about sophistication is it just about applying artificial intelligence for very sophisticated applications like rocket science space missions right not really ai is a candidate artificial intelligence is a candidate for any application that generates data you are a candidate for ai i am a candidate for ai because we generate data there are so many points around us which are actually absorbed at every point in time so you and me are candidates we are sophisticated are we we are plain and simple right did it so when we try to get this back we talk about simple bots face detection when you take a picture immediately facebook tags you and says you were with someone whether you want facebook to share the all the world and rest of the world to see whether you were with specific someone or so facebook still tags it based on the photograph and it checks you right all these are simple examples of artificial intelligence it's happening right now right your facebook recommendation the moment you open you say someone will see a message you have a set of recommendations for videos that might that you might like your google news box is actually populated with rss feeds who is behind it artificial intelligence right data crunching your banking experience your sentiment analysis everything is behind it if you read many of the newspapers 
because these days you only need, earlier it used to be a convention to identify who was the author of that particular news piece. Today you can see staff correspondent, okay. There is a very high possibility that that staff correspondent is a lifeless object which is nothing but a chatbot of artificial intelligence which is consuming news feeds from everywhere and putting this piece across for you. These are things that we are actually seeing in our daily life. In current form, however, however potent artificial intelligence is all about, it can be used to achieve efficiencies in simple, repeatable, well-defined and organized tasks. Okay. Since we said AI was born in 1954, is AI, is AI is mature enough? Because 60 plus years in an industry actually means too much, right? For a technology to survive, is it? No. We make a statement. AI is still in its infancy. The reason as to why I say this is there are three kinds of AI or artificial intelligence that most of you might have heard about. First one is what we call hello or the weak AI, in which case artificial intelligence is actually used to specialize in typical applications. Typical examples, Amazon or Amazon recommending a book for you, Netflix recommending a movie for you, they are all typical cases of weak AI. Right? Now, this starts weak AI because weak AI means that part of intelligence cannot be transferred to any other application. Next one is actually called generic AI or what we call artificial general intelligence wherein the technology is able to add learning or knowledge from one area into another. Typical key here is how does it transfer the knowledge into the domain. For example, it's something like you learn how to cook a recipe from your mom and you are able to apply the knowledge in a typical engineering process that is cracking the drop of oil. Right? How do you learn from one area and try to throw it to the other? That is actually called adaptive intelligence. Right? We learn from chess and apply it to the situation. Super AI. This is doing all that a human can do plus much more. Right? AI creating itself. Artificial intelligence working more like the Rakta Bhijasura. Every drop of blood that actually falls actually creates another million. So that's right, it's something similar, right? This is the third protocol that we actually, uh, this is what we see. See, in each of these cases, you can see the image of a person and a robot there. In narrow or weak AI, the human is still stronger and has control over the robot or the AI. Second case is where they are more or less similar in terms of capability. Third one is what is super AI, wherein we try to really look at the robotic case or artificial intelligence taking over humanity as a whole in terms of applications. Again, this is a dystopian view, okay? It's not a ranch where it's point of view, it's a dystopian view that we people. So AI is not yet mature. What? Where the phase where we actually lie is in the first phase, where we are still talking about improving efficiencies in our applications, right? How how well do I write an email? Good at How well do I probably run errands? I'm actually good at AI is not equal to human yet, right? Of course, we see a lot of dystopian theories popping up every now and then and say the human race is in danger, right? Why do we say this? If IQ or intelligence quotient is a measure of logical capability and computational capability, and an association like Mensa grades people based on the IQ, anywhere between 80 to 150, 150 seen as genius or a prodigy, right? And 80 is an average intelligence. And today when we say lot of computing power is available without constraints, you can just keep on sprinting servers here and there, you can add and surpass the gaining the genius levels. Is it true? Is it really true? That's true. There were experiments which were done just to emulate the top process of a brain of a rat. Okay, a brain of a rat. Which has 2 to 55 million neurons which can perform 500 trillion operations per second. And to do this, the computing resources that were actually required were 147,000 computers or servers stitched together, consuming 1 million watt of power every hour, with 6,000 tons of AC required for running a thought process similar to that of a rack. The human creation is this 1.7,000 server network. When we come to the human brain, 100 billion neurons 
is what we are, we are having. The capacity is running 38,000 trillion operations per second. Can you just imagine the number of processes required to emulate one individual? Exactly emulate one individual. And we can math, cannot count the zeros that go into it. So I've actually left it out obviously like that. Right? And see, this was the IBM Blue G supercomputer, which just occupied 40 million square centimeters in terms of physical space, just to emulate the brain of a rat, which is this big. Okay? God's creation versus human creation. Right? If I'm trying to have anything that emulates the human brain at any point in time, that's going to be a Herculean challenge. Because our capacity is physically quantified as 1,300 grams of gray mass with power consumption of 20 watts with no heat dissipation. That is the specification of the God's creation right now, right? So we can say AI is not equal to human yet because for a moment I was just assuming only the logical processing capability of the human being, right? But human beings like emotions plus IQ, EQ plus IQ, right? The emotion part is totally left out. Even if I assume that we need to generate a hardware as efficient as this, the day when AI is going to supersede or even equal human being is decades away going to by the Moore's law, right? It says the number of transistors on a chip actually multiplies by two each three years these days. Next. Next. AI is a harbinger of positive change. There are good cases that I would want to put up over here. Artificial intelligence can be democratizer, which means it can be used to bring in the gap between someone who is highly important and someone who has many things and someone who doesn't have. Right? If you get examples, we can actually use it to improve availability and accessibility to healthcare. Today we have artificial intelligence that can look at a picture and try to identify skin, skin cancer with an accuracy of 91%. We are one agrarian economy who are actually leader and who are seeing lot of carbon debts because the gains are always a gamble with nature, right? In this case, there are applications which are helping the farmers sowing fertilizer, dosing, irrigation, crop management, etc. This is happening in the backyard of Karnataka and Telangana already, right? This is improving the agriculture. On the healthcare, we are trying to talk about disease detection. Primary healthcare, this is an opportunity, right? Education, there are applications which are actually focusing on widening the net of education to Teacher the schools. Then we have in governance or government, we are trying to apply artificial intelligence to ensure we are able to expedite things. And we try to really look at it, one of the typical applications could be use of artificial intelligence to speed up 28 million pending judiciary cases, which would otherwise take 460 years to solve, and this can actually be accelerated. So when we talk about AI in the context of India, the opportunity is a billion starts to feed. Okay? And a billion likes to care. It's the needs of the plenty and services of a few. And this technology can really do it. Those nice data. Can I go to the conclusion? Okay. Of course, AI displaces a few jobs, but it also creates a lot more new jobs. The kind of job that we're actually going to eliminate is mostly to do with clerical stuff, things that can be repetitively automated, but there are still jobs that they are actually going to create. There is an emergent new class of job which can make sense of a lot of data around you, right? A lot of entrepreneurship opportunities are getting opened in India. 3,000 crores in the Indian Union budget to spur technology of AI in the context of the problems that we actually saw in the past. 300 Indian startups that have been successful in promoting AI over the past 3 to 5 years. So these are the opportunities that AI also comes along with. So in net, AI is also, artificial intelligence can also be a job creator not just the job destroyer. So given all these things, this technology, artificial intelligence has a lot of capability, right? A lot of potency. Just like Jambavanta always used to excite uh, Lord Hanuman and ensure that he always directed his energy towards the most positive aspects of life. It is our responsibility as people handling this technology to ensure that the sagely wisdom comes in and try to see that we use AI for very positive and pragmatic purposes. Having said that, the opportunity is now and here, right? There is a lot that you and me can do, even when artificial intelligence rolls its juggernaut.
So let us seize it and move on. Thank you so much and sorry for the show.